all because I promise you we're going to have plenty of time to socialize following the state of the community. We are going to start in the next two minutes, so if you will, please find your seats. We've got a few up front and a few in the second and third row, so don't be bashful. Um, me and Kitsa. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, which one of these work? I guess this will work. I'm going to talk on this one anyway. Well, I am Mayor Chuck Allen. I just wanted to come and take a minute and welcome everybody. I want to thank you for coming. This is something we started a couple of years ago to keep our citizens informed. Generally, elected officials use it, do it, but this time other officials are going to do it. So that's okay, too. You'll probably get a better presentation anyway. But I do want to just say that over the next couple of, of months, I hope everybody will be very generous. It's a very giving time of the year. If it's just buy somebody a cup of coffee, anything we can do to make our community better, please do that. I think what we see is over the next couple of months, the council works individually and with the staff to figure out what we want to do for our retreat. We have a retreat in February. And what is our kind of long-term plan? What I ask all our citizens is, what is it you want for your district? And what is it you want that we can work across districts? Maybe some in Council Member Williams or Council Member Taj or whoever. What can we do together to try to make projects better, to make our city better? So as we think the next couple of months and develop our plan for this year, I'd like to do that. I'd like the county, thank the county for all they're doing to help us. We're working really good as a team. Most of all, I hope all of you have great and safe holidays. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor Allen. Um, and we do, on behalf of, if I can get this microphone out, I can't stay still. Um, on behalf of the Wayne County Chamber of Commerce, Board of Directors and staff, we welcome you to this annual event. We thank the city and the county um, for the opportunity to bring this message to the community. Um, you know, it's one of those things we think we, we know some of the things going on in the community, but it, it, it's better when we can all really come together and hear some of the works that, that have been underway because um, these kinds of things don't happen overnight. We thank all of our elected officials who are with us today, both from the local and state and federal delegation. Um, and following this, I interrupted you all a minute ago, but following this is the annual holiday mixer. So from 5 to 6.30, it's floating. We're going to be having our annual holiday mixer. So think of it as like a business after hours in December. And I promise you the spread of food is going to be amazing because Longhorn Steakhouse is providing the food this evening. So you all will want to stay with that. But in addition to that, we are going to have the Wayne Education Network raffle. Okay. How many of you have bought your tickets? Raise your hand. Awesome. How many of you have not bought your tickets? Fantastic. See Janet Brock, Gwen Horn, Laura Landers, or Linda Murray to purchase your tickets. So what is it? I've got to do a plug before we get going in this. Um, for the past decade in this community, and I'm looking, I'm seeing some former dancing stars all over this room have been a part of this annual fundraiser um, for nine years, so going on a decade. And the annual fundraiser raises funds so we can do the teacher welcome breakfast, the uh, countywide career fair, the countywide STEAM fair, um, teacher mini grants, the junior leadership program. I could keep going on and on. Well, last year's annual fundraiser took place in the fall. And something else happened in the fall. We had another hurricane. So we pushed last year's event into this calendar year. And what we didn't think we could do is we didn't think we could come back to the community and say, we need more stars, we need more dollars. So we switched it up this year. And I want to thank our board of directors for taking the lead. Chrissy Smith is our board chair this year. And she really took the helm at this fundraising effort along with John Seegers and Charles Gaylor were very instrumental. But all of our board members have sold tickets um, for this. We've called it a raffle, but it's not a raffle, and I'm going to tell you why in a minute. This is like a mega basket. <laughs> so here's what you've got an opportunity to win, and then we'll move on with the program. Tickets are $20. You do not have to be present to win, but at 6 o'clock tonight, somebody's going to win. One person's going to win all of this. A bottle of Buffalo Trace, 
a Weber grill, a Yeti bucket, a scout box, well-traveled beer donation, tobacco and hops gift certificate, whoop axe, you can play for an hour, R&R Brewery, brewmaster for a day. I know there's some of y'all in this audience that would like that. LA Flight LLC is gonna get you a flight to the coast. Country View Western Stores got a $100 gift certificate. Four Seasons has a $150 gift certificate. 50 units of Botox. Southern, we're all over the place with this, aren't we? <laughs> Southern Wildlife, one oyster table and four gift packs. Belk, a $100 gift certificate. Berkeley Body Sculpting is going to give you a laser treatment. And Skin Therapy by Beth Day Spa is going to give you a facial. That is one person's going to win all this. Now, typically with these kind of events, we do these Facebook live. Is this live? No, we won't do the drawing live. That's the important thing because whoever wins this may want to share these gifts. Just be careful who you give the Botox to. <laughs> But anyways, you are going to have an opportunity to purchase a ticket for $20, or you can get five tickets, or 10, or 20, whatever floats your fancy. And they are available at, we're not going to sell them during, during this state of the community, but for an hour after this, come see a member of our team, and we will be glad to, um, to sell you one. And a big shout out to Charlie Ivey, who's at the back of the room, who is the chair of the Wayne Education Network, who's been very supportive of this. So moving on with the program. We are extremely thankful for our business investor sponsor, Jackson Builders. And we have our community investor sponsor, Wayne UNC Physicians Network. Wayne UNC um, has got some giveaways over here. So when this program is over, feel free to see them. And in the meantime, I'd like to turn things over to Kent Warren, who is president of Jackson Builders. He is going to be making today's introductions. Thank you, sir. Thank you. It's good to see such a big crowd. Um, pleased that uh, Jackson Builders has the opportunity to sponsor this event, uh, bring you the, all the news from the <coughs> county and the city. Uh, we are a full service general contractor. We've been in business for 45 years. It's our 45th anniversary this year, so that's a big celebration for us. And again, we're happy to be able to present this. Uh, happy to be doing a couple things in the community that I think we can spotlight before I introduce our speaker, uh, uh, one of our speakers, <clears throat> and that's the uh, Wayne County 911 call center, which we're very proud to be part of, and uh, it's a, a much needed thing in our county. We're also building the shell building out at the industrial park. That's 50,000 feet of upfittable space for some future industry that we desperately need. So that gives a good uh, marketing opportunity for our county. And uh, we've also done a little other work here in the county for uh, local businesses and organizations. And uh, that's kind of a little background on our company or kind of what we're doing uh, currently. So I'm going to introduce to you, that was my job, <coughs> uh, Ray Mayo, uh, Commissioner. He was appointed to the Wayne County Board of Commissioners in December of 20 2011 to serve District 1 and elected Vice Chairman of the Wayne County Board of Commissioners in December of 2012. Commissioner Mayo served on the Deacon Committee, Stewardship Committee, Nominating Committee, Sunday School Director, and <clears throat> Sunday School Teacher at New Life Baptist Church in Goldsboro. He currently serves as Deacon, Vice Chairman, and Assistant Sunday School <clears throat> Teacher at First Baptist Church, 125 South John Street, Goldsboro. He's a senior member of the Society of Manufacturing Engineers. Commissioner Mayo is a lifelong resident of the <clears throat> the Hunter community, an experienced businessman, Commissioner Mayo owns and operates North Carolina Manufacturing and is a co-owner of M&M Industrial Supply in Goldsboro. He was a machine shop instructor at Newport News Shipbuilding and Premise School. He was a manufacturing engineer at Acme United Corporation in Fremont. Please join me in welcoming Commissioner Ray Mayo. Thank you, Kent. Um, I also like to thank uh, Kate Daniels and the uh, Chamber for this event. Uh, it's really good to stand here and, and, and share with you what the county and the city in a lot of cases and the Board of Education has done uh, this past year up until now. Uh, if you will, Carol. And by the way, the bigger the crowd is, the more nervous I am. So you might have to, you know, look over that. One of the things that happened this year in Wayne County is that uh, 
we had some management changes. Uh, the Veteran Service Director, uh, Amy Smith, the EMS Transport Director, David Cuddleback, the Emergency Management Coordinator, Aaron Stryker, the 911 Director, Chris Barnes, Animal Services Director, Graham Price, and our Department of Social Service Director, uh, Kimberly McGuire. We have built four EMS stations in Wayne County. Uh, EMS 1 in Southern Springs, uh, in Hunter, in Mount Olive, and Goldsboro. I've been on the board eight years, and what, what I, one of the things that we came up with is that some spots of the county, we were a long way from being eight minutes ETA from a 911 call. So the commissioners got together and we put these four stations in and I can say, stand here and tell you that from anywhere in Wayne County right now, we are within close to eight minutes ETA to any point in Wayne County. That's a huge, that's a huge benefit. Yes, Carl. The other thing is that the John Bell building, uh, probation and parole office, if you remember, that was a formal farm services building uh, that was remodeled for probation and parole. I wish we could build all of our buildings in Wayne County like the money we saved on this one. Our facilities department actually did the work internally and there was a huge cost savings. So I would like to thank our facilities for the work that they did. It's a beautiful building. If you have not been in there, go take a tour. It really looks nice. We have a building out on Dixie Trail, which we call the Busman Building. Uh, Skinner Farlow, Kerwin Architecture has been chosen for architectural services. This is an adaptive use the building is going to be repurposed, repurposed for Wayne County Department of Social Services. It's a beautiful location, central location. The 911 center that has been mentioned, uh, Kent is involved in this <clears throat> contract. It was awarded to Jackson Builders. <clears throat> it's a state-of-the-art center for 911 telecommunications and emergency operations center. When I came on board eight years ago as a commissioner, we were short on our communications as far as backup systems and different things. This really makes it really safe and it also makes it operative. We need our 911 system to operate whether there's a hurricane, tornado, flood, whatever. It needs to operate. Wayne Executive Jet Corps. This 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 is a ongoing uh, jet port for Wayne County. I've been on the jet port board. Uh, we are doing a facelift that includes additional corporate hangars and repairs to many areas. And we have received over one four point one million dollars in grant funding obtained for improvements and expansions. Look, if you have not been to the Gulfsville Wayne Jet Board lately, and I've had some people that told me, look, I haven't been out there four or five years. They went out there and said, I didn't recognize the place. You know, the, the, the improvements that's going on at the Jet Corps is just phenomenal. Teacher supplements, this year we passed $800,200 passed and began this year for teacher supplements. <clears throat> we were able to do that. The property tax remained unchanged at .6635 for every $100 in assessed value. Meadow Lane Project, another brand new school for the Wayne County Public School System is open. It was an $18 million pro a project. If you haven't been in that school, you will not find the school any more state of the art than Meadow Lane is. Southern Wayne High School gym has also been approved for funding uh, for a competition gym 
at Southern Wayne High School, and that was just done a few weeks ago. Even though construction has already started, we just hit, we just had the ground breaking. The radio, <clears throat> excuse me, the radio tower project, we received a grant from Duke Energy to go towards radio system and tower improvements, reinforcing public safety radio systems to be redundant every day as well <clears throat> as during disasters. We have to have our communication system working no matter what the conditions are. Well, this is the one. This is the collaborative effort between the county and the city. The Maxwell Center, again for the second year in a row, is the winner of the Convention South Magazine and Reader's Choice Award. There's over $5 million of new revenue in the first year. Held over 200 events in the first year. And the county took over the negotiations, and, when, and I don't like the word took over. I like to say we, uh, we agreed, we volunteered to uh, take over negotiations for a hotel adjacent to the Maxwell Center, and this is the good news. Currently, we have two prospects bidding on this project. It would, it would be a huge asset if we get that hotel up. We have uh, Park East, Lot 8. Construction is underway. Our shell building uh, is perfect for new or existing businesses in Wayne County. And the investment made by the county and the WCDA to invest in the future of Wayne County. And Kent, you're the contractor on that one too, right? Yes, okay. We also have a new <coughs> industrial park called, called the Goldsboro Industrial Campus. Uh, the renderings completed for the site. The first building bid process is to begin soon. We have $1.7 million grant for water, sewer, road work, and grading. Trees have been cleared, and first quarter 2020, dirt will be hauled and entrance will be completed. This is on Pike Town Road. If you don't lay the location. The Goldsboro Industrial Campus. This is going to be a huge plus for our city and our county in the coming years. I think this is the last one, isn't it? Yes. Okay. Last but not least, I want to put in a I want to put in a a really important uh, issue that is on the March ballot. I would like for us to come together and support by the recommendation of the Board of Education a $2.6 million dedicated to public schools, a quarter cent sales tax, which means that we would pay 25 cents on, on every $100 spent. That would generate us $2.6 million, which would probably allow us to fund about and make payments on approximately two schools. Don't, have, don't, don't hold me to that, but it's for approximate. It also in, excludes groceries and unprepared foods, medicine, and gas. This is the most this is the most equal tax that we can have. We can raise money quickly. I do ask that you you look at this, vote March the third, and I will tell you in the next couple of weeks, uh, the Board of Education and, and, and Mike Dunsmore, our superintendent, the county, and the city, we are, after the holidays, we're going to be putting a advertising campaign out there. We're going to, this time around, we're going to let the citizens know what we're going to spend it for. So that's coming. So hold on to your hats because it's going to, we're going to be at every single corner of this county uh, to get the quarter cent sales tax. That's where we are at the county. Uh, does anyone have any questions that you'd like to ask me? If you do, I'll just turn them over to the county manager. Or <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Any questions? I would like to wish all of you 
a very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Thank you so much. get the pleasure of introducing to you <clears throat> Mr. Tim Salmon. He's the city manager for Goldsboro, North Carolina, serving over 36,000 residents. As city manager, he's the chief executive officer of city government and is responsible for daily operations and overseeing all city departments. Mr. Salmon is a retired U.S. Marine Corps colonel with over 30 years of leadership and management experience. <clears throat> he completed his military career in August 2018 at NATO headquarters in Brussels, Belgium, as the U.S. military delegation acting chief of staff and, a strategic, and as a strategic planner. He also served as the commanding officer, which is the city manager equivalent, for Marine Corps Air Station New River in Jacksonville, North Carolina. Mr. Salmon's originally <clears throat> from New Jersey. He has a Bachelor of Science in Political Science from the U.S. Naval Academy and a Master of Science degree in Nas National Resource Strategy from the Industrial College of the Armed Forces. Please join me in welcoming Tim Salmon. Get that thing back in there. <laughs> well, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for coming here today. I very much appreciate you taking valuable time out of your busy schedules to listen to these presentations. I'd like to thank the Wayne County Chamber of Commerce for organizing this event, the Goldsboro Event Center for hosting it, and many of my directors at the City of Goldsboro and our public information officer for putting this particular presentation together. And at this time, I'd like to recognize our city council members that are here. Mayor Allen spoke earlier. Thank you, sir. Council Member Broadway, Council Member Ham, Council Member Acock, Council Member Williams. I know Council Member Matthews wanted to be here. I don't know if she made it in from school yet. And Council Member Polak, uh, congratulations all on your re-election and elections, and I look forward to working with you very closely over the next few years going forward. I know Major, Al uh, not Major, Mayor, <laughs> Mayor Allen would do this differently than me, but uh, I've got. Uh, I'm going to give you my presentation from my viewpoint after seven months on the job. So uh, when I came into the job. My uh, vision, if you will, is to set the standard for public service in North Carolina at Goldsboro. Now, that's a pretty lofty goal, and there's a lot of great municipalities around here, but I've always kind of aimed for the moon and land amongst the stars philosophy. So I'm going to continue to push our department heads and our employees to search for excellence in everything they do. Uh, our mission statement's up there on the board. We provide services, promote equality, and protect the well-being of our citizens for a better tomorrow. I've emphasized uh, our citizens want that today, and we are going to execute those tasks every day. Goals, uh, these were determined by city council in their retreat in 2017, and they did a very nice job of defining what our goals are to achieve that mission. A safe, secure community, strong, diverse economy, uh, ex exceptional quality of life, racial and cultural harmony, and excellence in government. What we need to do now as a staff, and they've been working on it before I ever got here, but I've been pushing it ever since, is to put some meat on those bones. What does that mean? What are the objectives that allow you to accomplish those goals, and how do you measure that? Uh, and we've done some of that, and I'm going to talk about that right now. Eventually, we'd like to get that dashboard out to the public on our website so you can see what we're tracking and what we're doing. So next slide. So safe and secure community, you know, it starts right off with the crime rate. And over the last three years, our crime rate has gone down about 20%, which is great, from about 3,700 incidents to below 3,000 incidents uh, last year. This is in large part due to the amount of police officers we have on our force. We have 109 sworn police officers authorized in our budget. Uh, at one point, though, they were in the low 80s, about 25% less than we are authorized. When you don't have those people on the streets or in those positions doing those jobs, you have less oversight of the problems that are out there. Uh, this past year, we were up to 105 of 109. So that is excellent, and we continue to search for good employees, and we get them by providing new cars, uh, new capabilities, new building, 
Um, shot spotter is a capability that we have out there. When we know that uh, shots are fired around town, our police can reply or be on scene in a timely manner. We've been able to uh, stand up a gang unit and support that. We've put people in other organizations like the U.S. Marshals and the ATF. Those people leverage those capabilities to fight crime every day. So congratulations to our police force. I'd also mention that uh, they are seeking excellence in the CALEA certification, which is the Commission uh, for Accreditation of Law Enforcement Agencies. Uh, they've been going through a 36-month internal evaluation, and next fall we expect to receive CALEA uh, certification, which puts you in the top police uh, law enforcement communities. And we are going to fund in the coming year, working very closely with Wayne County and the Sheriff's Office, to do mobile field reporting. Right now, our police officers, after a hard day's work, come into the office at the safety center and write up written reports. It's hard to believe, but they do that. Uh, and we are going to enable them to do it electronically from their cars so that they can process paperwork more efficiently and be on the patrol a longer period of time. So this is going to be a huge improvement going forward. Next slide, please. So the other major portion of our uh, safe and secure community, of course, is the fire department. In our fire department, when we looked at some metrics, fire departments should respond within four minutes. And we were part of a North Carolina uh, School of Government benchmark study, and they are shooting for that about 87% of the time from those other cities that are in that study. And our police department is on scene 97% of the time within four minutes. So there's an example of what we're going to benchmark and how we're doing very well. Uh, our police department also gets out into the public. We have great community relations. Uh, they're teaching fire safety and public safety. Uh, they've done some fundraising for various campaigns. And maybe one of the more important things we're doing now uh, is they're working with the YMCA to do youth swim training, which is obviously a life-saving skill and an issue we had in this town not too long ago. So very important work from our fire department. Thank you for that. Okay, so our next goal strong and diverse economy. We're in the final phase of our streetscape project. Right now it's a $5 million uh, Tiger Grant that we're completing so we can complete Center Street uh, from the hub, Chestnut Street on down to Elm Street. Uh, overall we've spent about, put $45 million into downtown. The city itself did $9 million. Uh, we've received $15 million from state and federal grants and over $20 million in private investment. And you'll see on the right is a picture when we have some of our uh, politicians at the state level, we're able to secure some capabilities for tax breaks when you rehab older buildings and put them back into use. And so we're going to have a $12 million project come downtown for six buildings that will allow us to have 63 rental units downtown. When you put those families and people downtown, the commerce is going to continue to increase and get better. It's already difficult to find a parking spot downtown, and uh, we all look forward to what that will bring in the near future. Next slide. Okay, <clears throat> but it goes beyond downtown, of course. Uh, we had Hobby Lobby. I understand that was a big deal around here. It was before my time, seven months ago, but uh, that was well anticipated and one of their best grand openings for that company. We've had more than 183 millions worth of building permits issued this year. You can see those companies that are coming to us. We have Wayne County Community College is going to do an auto repair building for about $7.2 million. We've got an affordable suites hotel, Renew Life Trauma Center, Circle K gas station. There's also uh, been a request to do a 300 home development project on 11th Street where we've done some redistricting to make that happen. That is in the early planning stages right now, but that'll bring more people to our population in Goldsboro. And I'd also like to mention a significant campaign that was put together by our Downtown Development Department in coordination with the Downtown Goldsboro Development Corporation, many other partners from Wayne County Community College, uh, Mount Olive, Eastern Carolina University School of Business, et cetera, where this enables our current uh, small business owners to be successful out there as well as enabling new entrepreneurs. It'll be, for those selected to take this course, it'll be an eight-week course. And in the end, they're going to give their business plan. Uh, and the ones selected to give the best business plan will receive some kind of grant to open their business. So for those of you interested in small business, I think this is an excellent opportunity. And please contact our downtown development department. 
Okay, exceptional quality of life, uh, where the rubber meets the road, if you will, kind of starts with your infrastructure. So in 2019, we did 11 miles of pavement at $2.7 million. In 2020, we're going to do another eight miles at $2 million. We've done uh, what we call our phase four of the sewer rehabilitation, six miles uh, cured in place pipe put through our sewer system, $9 million, 85% complete. Wastewater system rehab, we've added an extra four-fifths of a mile with pipe bursting capability, 1.5 million, 95% complete. We have some old infrastructure and we're getting after it. So I appreciate the uh, public works, public utility people that are making this happen. This was contracted maintenance and uh, a lot is getting done. I know you can see it all out there. We hear calls quite often on the potholes that exist out there and the torn up road. But uh, let me just tell you that all needs to settle a little bit before you pave it or after you pave it, it'll settle. So uh, we try to get it done and taken care of as soon as possible and certainly clean up the stones so we don't ding up your cars. But uh, please be patient with us as we improve our roads. Next slide. Okay, so uh, obviously water, uh, you don't just capture rainwater anymore. This is a significant process as you can see right here to make sure you all have drinking water. And over the last year, our tests have been 100% meeting or exceeding standards. So congratulations to the Public Utilities Department for making that happen. And what we're also doing is increasing the capability from 12 million gallons per day to 14 million gallons per day. That's gonna cost $2 million to do and we're expecting to complete that by January of 2021, but that's gonna enable an additional growth. For instance, those 300 homes or some of the new businesses being considered here in Goldsboro. Next slide, please. All right, exceptional quality of life with our, I'll give our Parks and Recreation Department a plug here. And the Bryan Multi-Sports Complex, we work very closely with the um, Seymour Johnson Air Force Base over 20 major events this year, and we're talking major, right? So at least 50 teams come to some of these events from all over the, the state of North Carolina, and we've had one with 140 teams from across the country. Huge events, always busy out there, $4.3 million in economic impact, uh, also adding to significantly to our occupancy tax revenue, which has increased uh, to over a million dollars. Um, so lots happening due to that investment. It's also the home of the Eastern Carolina Phantoms football team, the uh, football club, which is soccer, the Strike Eagles, and the Wayne County United Soccer Club. A lot's going on out there if you, if you love those sports. Um, and I'll, I'll give a little plug for our travel and tourism department. You know, they go out and actively seek events, bringing people to our town and the finances associated with that. And this particular year, if you look on the right, they brought U.S. Quidditch. So I don't know if anybody follows Harry Potter, and, uh, and that what they were doing on broomsticks, but this is an attempt to mimic that game. And if you look closely, they have a broomstick between their legs. Not actually, you know, the, the, the piece that swipes things up, but they're carrying a stick while they're performing basketball skills, dodgeball skills, and, uh, and trying to run around and tackle each other, which is quite amazing to watch. So uh, we had 20 college teams and um, club teams here to do that event, raising, um, significant interest in money. So congratulations for our travel and tourism who will continue to bring different organizations to Goldsboro to do these kinds of things. And uh, if you didn't see it this year, check it out next year. It's really fun to watch. They'll be here for a second year. Um, our travel and tourism creates many videos and this is one of them that uh, brings people to Goldsboro. So please hit it. In Goldsboro, North Carolina, the sky isn't the limit. All part of our exceptional quality of life, to include Eastern Carolina food and beer. Which, by the way, we're opening two new uh, uh, beer works factories, so looking forward to some of that homemade brew. Okay, racial and cultural harmony. Uh, we obviously have a very diverse council, boards, commissions, and workforce, uh, and events that are representative of all our citizens out there. You just see on the right, we have council member Brandy Matthews, first African-American woman elected to council. Congratulations to her and uh, her community. 
we, uh, we're going to rely on her heavily going forward, along with the rest of our council members, to continue to push cultural and racial harmony. And we're also going to have a citizens class. This has been requested by uh, a number of people. They've done one in the past. In the springtime, we'll be putting this together to educate our citizens and enhance their participation in government. I think that's going to be a really great effort. Headed up by Octavius Murphy over there, right? Uh, I see him nod his head he likes. I give him this project. I give him project after project. But, uh, and he's done a great job. Next slide, Octavius. Um, and I think racial and cultural harmony is, is very evident in some of the things we do. Our Paramount Theater production has a lot of great diversity there. Um, everything from bluegrass to North Carolina symphony and music, uh, African dance to the Nutcracker Ballet, Oklahoma put on by Center Stage, and White Christmas put on by Stage Struck from our local performers. And my wife and I love going there to see these presentations. I hope you all get a chance to do it. If you don't, many of them are sold out. Uh, and if you do go, you'll help sell them out. But uh, please support our local community events, and I think you're going to enjoy them very much. We had, you can see the picture on the right, our first June 19th or Juneteenth celebration. I appreciate uh, the Curtis Media Group making that happen. It commemorates the abolition of uh, slavery in here in the United States. And it was a great event for many local performers out there doing that, uh, and I enjoyed it very much. But I'll also emphasize going forward in the next year on Armed Forces Day weekend and the week of that, we are going to hold a North Carolina Freedom Fest in support of all of our armed forces here in North Carolina or anybody else out of the state if they'd like to come too. But we are all our airmen and their families at Seymour Johnson Air Force Base. We've got Army down at Fort Bragg. We've got Marines at Marine Corps Air Station Cherry Point, a little over an hour away. Uh, we've got the people down in Jacksonville with Camp Lejeune and Marine Corps Air Station New River. Hopefully they uh, enjoy our entertainment, come up here and be a part of that festivity. All right, excellence in government. So I talked a little bit about our strategic plan. Uh, there has been discussion amongst several of our council members on developing an economic development plan. Uh, we've got some money, uh, not in this year's budget, but we will be talking about that with our council members during our retreat in February, and we'll see if we get it in the budget for next year, but that would help uh, go beyond. We have a development plan 10 years ago put out for downtown, and we shall see uh, how that would go forward across the citywide. Uh, we recently completed in October a Goldsboro 2045 Metropolitan uh, Transportation Plan that was coordinated with North Carolina Department of Transportation and the Federal Highway Administration approved by our local committees. And that basically lays out the requirements to 2045 so we can go ahead and ask for the grants and figure out what we need to do, ask for the loans uh, to make this, our transportation hub, continue to function as it currently does and better going forward. Our human relations, human resources, personnel policy is being reviewed right now by our employees and we will update that policy in the very near future. But we are also doing a pay study over the next year and that will allow us to benchmark against other local governments for, so our positions are appropriately uh, paid and we can keep our talented employees. We're also doing a utilities rate study that's been uh, funded for in this year's budget. It's uh, very important. I don't think it's been done in a long time. I don't want to quote the exact time because it's been a long time. But uh, we need to do that because we need to pay for over 25 miles of sewer infrastructure that's putting water to your house and 25 more miles that's coming back with the sewer. We, need, uh, we have a water treatment plant that was built in 1955 that we need to upgrade at some point in time. Probably 10 years, give or take a couple of years, we're going to need to replace that facility. That is not cheap and we need to have a critical infrastructure program in place to pay for that and figure out how we're going to coordinate for grants and such to make that happen. And our water uh, reclamation facility is also going to need to expand. There are additional costs and regulations coming down from federal and state um, authorities that we have to comply with, so this study is meant for that. Next slide. And uh, I'll wrap up the model for excellence portion with there's been requests. We have information all over the place and all these events going on, but it's not in one place. Well, now you have one place. Visit goldsboro.com events. Everybody's information in Wayne County and Goldsboro is feeding into that site. 
hosted by our travel and tourism, and you can find what you want every day of the week there if you just go to that site, and, and you're going to find a lot of events going on. So in summary, uh, city government's working for our citizens. Our employees' values are professionalism, integrity, customer, i.e. citizen service. If you're not getting that, if you don't see that, please let me know. Please let the department heads know. Go ahead and put in a citizen complaint request, whatever you want to do. But we aim to serve you every day. Uh, we have a strategic plan that we're working on so that we can measure performance. And we will be performance mindset so we can seek excellence. And we're going to align all that with our city council's vision, mission, and goals. So I hope uh, that presentation informs you on, on how I see the city going forward. I look forward to working with everybody. Thank you very much. Your, your military service has shown it's exactly 445. Well done, sir. <laughs> that is precision. <laughs> Did we learn something new today that maybe we didn't know was going on in our community? Um, it is incredible what's going on in this community. We've been saying this for the, for the past handful of years, that there's really good momentum. And I'm telling y'all, it's just cranking up. And um, so a huge thank you for our presenters today. Thank you so much for the information that you provided. And how about a round of applause for the city and the county staff that works year round to help support these efforts. It doesn't just happen, does it? All right, I thought I had some closing notes, but if I don't, that means y'all can get out of here. I'm just kidding. I'll find it, I always have backup. Um, I do want to close with just a couple of announcements, one of which we are going to be sending out invitations to the annual banquet very soon. Who wants to know the date? February 20th. We are excited to announce that the annual banquet is going to be then and, um, and hope that you will be able to join us. Um, at that time, it's a good opportunity for us to be able to share what's happened in the prior year. Um, and we share our annual report, which is kind of our report card. And it's always a good reminder to all of us because you all in this room are representative of small business, big business, government, healthcare, nonprofit all these entities that are working together. And the chamber is going to be able to be a resource for a multitude of different reasons. Um, Craig Fode, raise your hand. I'm going to pick on you for just a second. Who else? Um, I saw Delphi. I'm calling out some launch people. Is Julie or Scott, Charles Gaylor? Raise your hand and keep them up. Launch was something that Tim, Tim shared. Um, there's a deadline coming up this month. We would love the opportunity to talk to you if you are an entrepreneur, if you've already got a business that is already launched, but you want to take it to the next level, we'd love to talk to you. Or if you've had some great idea, we're going to hook you up with some incredible partners to bring that to reality. So, and a huge thank you to the Wayne County Development Alliance for that partnership as well. So, we're going to move on to the party, but by show of hands, we're going to do another show of hands. How many of you have all of your Christmas shopping done? <laughs> all right. How many of y'all join me with you haven't done anything? All right. For those of you on the front end and the back end, you are not going to come to a Chamber of Commerce event where we do not do an ask that you support what? your local community. It is very easy to go online and click a button and have something shipped to your house. But I promise you, those big named websites and stores are not supporting your local communities. They're not volunteering in churches. They are not running businesses in your community. They are not supporting your community. So be mindful of it. And every year I put out a plea um, when I go on Curtis Media Group radio stations and around the community. If you think you can't find it in Wayne County, call me. Every year I'll get a couple, I only get like three, I want like 20 phone calls this year of people saying, I'm looking for this. Not once have I ever had to send somebody out of Wayne County. So the challenge is out. Um, and as you're patronizing local businesses, if you're on social media, share it. Because the cool thing is, you can come into Wayne County any given weekend that I'm out and you run into somebody from neighboring counties. So there's great work being done here led by a lot of you all, and we want to help share that love. So another shameless plug, how many of y'all have downloaded my Chamber app? This is a free app. We've had over 100,000 uses since it was launched. Um, you simply type in my Chamber app. It should find your location as Wayne County. You click on Wayne County Chamber, and instantly you're going to have over 600 businesses ready to serve you right here in your community. 
Um, say you go back home to visit family in Texas. I use that as an, as an example. If you're there in the holiday season, we want to rewire everybody's brain. When you're in Texas, click your hometown there, select a different chamber. More than likely, they're going to be on the same platform. And guess what? You're going to know who their local chamber members are and can support them. So big plea to that, um, to, to make sure you're supporting local, not just the holiday season, but year round. I'm preaching to the choir, aren't I? So with that, on behalf of the entire Wayne County Chamber of Commerce team, our board chair, Chrissy Smith, the entire board of directors, we want to wish each of you a very Merry Christmas and a very prosperous new year. We are going to be moving into the holiday mixer, which literally is moving in the back right there. I told you that Longhorn was preparing an amazing um, meal, and we are going to be having the Wayne Education Network raffle. Tickets are $20. I'm not going to read the list of prizes again. You can come see any member of our staff. We will be sure uh, to get your name in the drawing, and we're going to do that at 6. You do not have to be present to win. So if you want to stroke that $100 check, you can do it and walk out the door or go get something to eat um, or stay and you don't have to be present to win. Chrissy, Chrissy's got some more to sell. Chrissy has sold 35 tickets. Woo! She's leading the pack. But with that, please stay and enjoy and thank you gentlemen again for all of your leadership. Merry Christmas.